This is an open letter for two of my American pink skin friends. Considering that still the population of the United States is 70% pink skin. So this is for the 70%, my, my pink skin friends in North America and specifically in the United States. There was in the news, I'm sure most of you have heard, read or heard about it, that there was a city in, uh, in Northern California by the name of Paradise. A uh, very well-known city, I believe, it was Guns N' Roses, who also had a song about uh, "Welcome to the Paradise City, where the girls are pretty" and all of that. Beautiful song. Anyway, it was in the news that, unfortunately, recently in the past few years, during one of these fires that result of global global warming and and dry spell dry trees and dry underbrush and the whole thing burned down the jungle burned down and the, the city was you know located underneath the jungle which I'm sure the reason for its beauty had been the reason it was that it was you know built underneath giant trees and uh, Therefore, the, the, the reason for its beauty was apparently the reason for its destruction because when the jungle goes, so does the city underneath it, the small town or city or village underneath it. So there went Paradise City up in smoke and unfortunate. But then I thought, then, then I was thinking about it and I thought, what if, well, actually, like one or two houses were saved. Yeah, whether, whether, for, for whatever reason, in the whole city, like one or two houses were left standing. I was thinking about those houses, and I, for some reason, I also rem remember the, the phrase that many Americans use, and it's a must use for any politician that is seeking high office and people expect him to use the phrase uh, God bless America and I thought well maybe these like one or two houses that were standing <laughs> maybe they also you know prayed for the same, God bless us and our family and God bless this house and therefore, what do you know, God bless them and the house was saved. But then you dig a little farther and, and you realize that were they really lucky for being saved? these one or two houses that were saved in the whole city of, let's say, thousands of homes, these one or two that were saved, are they really lucky? Have their prayers really been answered? Because look at it this, look at it this way. Uh, there's, there's no longer any gas station there, and from the looks of it, nobody's gonna put up a gas station anywhere in that town. There's no longer a grocery store. Nobody's going to build another grocery store in that town. That town is basically has gone back to the nature. Nobody dares rebuild anything in that town. Many of its population, as I was listening to NPR, many of its population had just actually left the town, gone seeking asylum somewhere inland, in Idaho, and in Indiana, and in Oklahoma, and uh, other places, or even towns near 
paradise in California. And, and you're thinking that, so these guys who supposedly were saved, lost, you know, there are no more amenities in the town. No fire station, no grocery store, no gas station, no drug store. Roads are not going to probably be kept. Uh, and everything is going to basically go back to nature. <laughs> so, were they really blessed for their house being saved and not burning down? Because, you know, it doesn't seem that it's, it, they're going, these two houses that were saved, it doesn't seem to me uh, that are going to be any use for these guys. And these guys also have to abandon these two houses because if, if you have to, you know, drive down the road that is no longer a road and nobody's making any repairs on it, so over time it will become a dirt road full of holes and potholes and trees fall down on the road and nobody's going to clear the trees. So you're stuck in your house in the middle of jungle Nobody's gonna, you know, with, you know, no uh, clean water, city provided clean water, and no city provided sewer, and no city provided electricity. Basically, you go off the grid. A town in paradise, a, a, a house in paradise city, is basically, if anybody wants to stay there, is basically they have to agree to go off grid because, you know, the grid is no longer, doesn't. <laughs> No longer exist there. Now, then, when when you think about it, you think that okay, it doesn't seem they were saved. It doesn't just not being harmed directly. It doesn't mean you're saved. You're gonna be harmed indirectly. And not to mention that for a while. Probably their house served as as an as the asylum, a refuge for the whole neighborhood or half of the city. They just went to their house to because you know those who survived the fire, you know, in their basements or in their shelters came out and they basically had to seek refuge in these two one or two standing houses because their house was, there was nothing else. They, they had to go to these houses seeking refuge for some water and some food until, you know, emergency ser services arrive and some kind of, uh, you know, government probably sets up shop in these houses in order to provide services to the rest of the people from the surrounding area. And basically these two houses they stop being houses for their their main occupants as soon as fire as soon as fire passes through, because they they no longer you know they either have to function as a refuge for other people, and they can't really you know put up their hands and say no nobody is allowed because you know they're all their neighbors their friends and neighbors they can't just say no 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 nobody should come to our house. Nobody should seek refuge here because whatever. Uh, they can't. Morally, they can't. So they have to allow people to seek refuge in their house until uh, things are much clearer. Authorities come and emergency services come until things become much more, more clear and people can you know, find appropriate shelter. So from the moment of the fire, you understand that these houses weren't also saved. They no longer function as houses. And there is no market for their sale either, because if there is no town and you have a house off grid, well, maybe there's a market, but you know, it's going to be, the price is going to be one hundredth of what you paid for, because nobody wants to actually come and live there, and except a few people who are willing to go off grid, who are, you know, not usually, not, you know, not usually very rich. 
so my point up from all of this is that this house is what I imagine when I hear this lonely house standing in the middle of a smoldering field of Paradise City. This house is when I what is what I imagine when I hear God bless America. I'm with you. I love America. I love Uncle Sam. But here's the thing. How, was the only house that was standing really blessed? Is that the answer? It's sort of like I seek a blessing for my house and my family and well, the rest should take care of themselves. And imagine, now you take, you take this one step farther. Imagine the house was the house of the mayor of the city that was saved. Just imagine. It wasn't in reality, but just imagine that the house or one or two houses that were saved, or that house, one of them was the house of the mayor of the city. Basically the same position that for, for the past 50, 30 years, 50 years, the United States have been, has been holding. Ever since World War II, well, for, for a while there was Soviet Union, we had two mayors on, on the planet, and, but even since the 1990s, it was one mayor. So, you know, 40 years, 30 years of being the mayor of the you know, the United States fun has functioned as the mayor of the planet, the caretaker of the planet, because of its size and because of its, uh, you know, its uh, wanting to be the sole superpower, trying to, doing its best to be the sole superpower of the world, having all the say in the world. Okay, fine. Equivalent to being the mayor of the city of Paradise City. Imagine his house, he keeps asking God for blessing for his house and his family, and God saved them, and God blessed them, and God saved them, and God blessed them, and eventually it happens. The town burns down and his house is saved, but his house is saved. Again, he, he as the mayor has had the obligation to make sure the whole town is safe but apparently he was not you know he didn't take care of his obligation the whole town was not safe under the trees and the whole thing burned down and because of that, his house seemed to be the blessed one, but he wasn't blessed because then it was overrun by, by, by all his friends and neighbors that were seek, who were seeking refuge in his house. And eventually he had to abandon his house as well because there were no more, you know, they suddenly went off grid. His house was suddenly located off grid and he had, didn't have a use of his house either. And eventually he had to leave it or sell it for one hundredth of the price he paid for. So my point is this. United States of America has been the sole, you know, superpower, big brother of planet Earth for the past 30 years, at least. And 70 years, considering after World War II as well, more than 70, 90 years. 75 years. So the point is this, by saying God bless America, and which is obligatory to eh, all the politicians who want to be, you know, have mass acceptance, and it's all the, you know, everybody, everybody, including me, God bless America. But what it's implied in in what is implied when one says God bless me, that's very, you know, let, let's, <laughs> that's very arrogant, but let's say, but I say God bless me, that means just me. It's like, fuck my brother, fuck my sister, fuck this, fuck my neighbor, fuck my friend. Uh, I really don't give a fuck about anybody else around me. God bless me. 
same thing works when I say God bless my family. Same thing when, when I say God bless my neighborhood. What about the other neighborhoods within the city? Same that works when you say God bless my country. What about the other you know, countries around you or on the planet? We have 197, last count, 197 countries on this planet. That are, that are nations, that are groups of people within geographical, arbitrary geographical boundaries that call themselves by name. And let, let's be clear about this. Um, th there is this thing, there is this, uh, you know, tribal feeling when we say, when we name a piece of geography. Do you folks really think God's God has, you know, uh, understand understands the arbitrary, system that you have set up by drawing lines on the ground and calling it America and Mexico and this is this side is this and that side is that I mean the God that you have in mind who has created the whole planet without any you know visible lines on the ground do you really think he's you know he's really concerned about he or she is really concerned about the arbitrary lines that you have drawn on the on 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 Earth and calling it by different names. I, I don't think if he has created the whole fucking planet and the solar system and the you know the, within the Milky Way galaxy and within the you know the universe that whatever universe that we can you know observe with our senses at least that is so vast and so, you know, unimaginably large with so many components, you really think God has in mind to, you know, the, understands the borders that it separates these little, you know, these little uh, pieces of dry land on one of these small planets it doesn't doesn't and you're not helping when you say god bless you know god bless just me and my nation just god bless our nation because you know first of all god doesn't recognize arbitrary lines drawn on a map so it doesn't understand the concept of nations and tribes if there is a god and second you should understand that no, as they say, old saying, uh, no, no man is an island to himself. No nation is an island to itself. Even when there are nations that are island, like like uh, the the fucking British, they're not an island to itself. They're dependent wholly on the mainland Europe for most of their resources, from vegetable to oil to fish to grains they cannot sustain 90 million fucking British on their little shitty island with just British produce and nobody they may be able to but they have to go back to the stone live in the stone age because the planet has become interdependent and you know whatever British can produce better they they export and whatever they can they cannot produce so well they import so if they don't i mean they have to go back to meat and potato you know fish and potato that's basically their main production they can go back to total independence and screw the world and god bless the british and god bless us the british and fuck the rest of the world and let the rest of the world burn down they can do that, but then they have to go back to, you know, fish and chips. Breakfast, lunch and dinner, fish and chips. So my point is this, that one cannot say that God bless me, my, whatever is, you know, whatever I am, my family, my city, my nation, but I really don't care what happens to the rest because the, the, I don't care what happens to the rest is implied when you say God bless us. 
when you say God bless us, that means eh, others. Eh. If you want to, you know, kill them, who cares? It, it, it doesn't work like that. Just like it doesn't work in the Paradise City and its mayor, it doesn't work. It, it, even if uh, even if his house is is saved and blessed, it will not be a proper house. And you see that in 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 reality, in reality, you see that. This exactly has happened. What has happened? Oh, gee, God bless America. Great. So far, America for the past 70 years, 75 years. Peaceful, you know, progressive, peaceful, progressive, peaceful, progressive. Great. We love it. But, and a lot of, um, and most people around the world love America and love Americans. That's why they, you know, copy your music, copy your uh, movie, watch your movies and listen to your music and everything American, everything American so far has been, you know, has been the ideal for the rest of the world. They like to follow in your footsteps. Unlike, uh, uh, un, uh, uh, in, in exact, it's the exact opposite of what the military industrial complex is trying to tell you, my American friends, my pink skin friends, the military industrial complex keeps trying to tell you that they hate you. They hate America. Nobody hates America because it's the it, it, military industrial complex benefits from more investment in military industrial complex. So they have they have this tendency of telling all Americans that you know in the media all over that everybody in the world hates you. No, if if they hated you, American music and American movies would not have have sold so much around the world. If they hated you, they wouldn't. The rest of the planet would not be following your fashion and your music and your movies and your culture. They follow because they love you for whatever reasons, whatever ideals, whatever whatever you know sh show that you have been able to put on whatever impression that um, um, uncle sam has been able to put on however for whatever reason they love you people of the world so it, it's just it's just a matter of you know convenience for the military or industrial complex and a matter of profit to imply to you that the rest of the world hates you that aside what, what, what I was getting at is that, okay, peaceful, great, progressive, top of the line for the past 70 years, United States of America. But as a mayor of the world, United States of America has intervened, not for the better, but for the worse, in all over the world, including Central America, Southeast Asia, Middle East, Africa, all over the world, United States of America has, well, CIA and other, you know, covert and overt forces on behalf of Uncle Sam, whether Uncle Sam acknowledged it or not, they have intervened all across the planet on behalf of Uncle Sam and the result has not been well. You can, you can see that from the situation in Honduras and Nicaragua and El Salvador. You can see that in situation in Colombia, situation in Venezuela. You can see that in situation in Chile. You can see that in situation in the Middle East, situation in Southeast Asia. These are all inter, have been intervention. We're talking Southeast Asia, I mean, from Korea to Vietnam to, you know, Cambodia to... You, you see what I'm saying? The whole thing, and it seems they have to, you have been you have been told that we are intervening, uh, with you know we are helping the good guys. So the result must have been good, right? If you intervene on the behalf of the good guys and you are the mayor of the world and you are the most strongest superpower then everything should have you know, worked out well, right? Then why the fuck these, all these refugees from all the planet, from the Middle East to Africa to South America to Southeast Asia, why everybody else wants to come to the United States? 
folks, again, they tell you another lie that this becomes, uh, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy because we are the best. No, because you have intervened and their houses have burned down. You haven't been a good mayor. Their shed holes have burned down. So now they're picking up and trying to move to your neighborhood, to your house. Just like, you know, the mayor who was in charge of the town didn't care, take care of the town. The town burned down. He was blessed. His house was still standing. But everybody else from the neighborhood had to seek, re seek refuge in his house because his house was the only one standing after the fire. So th this idea that I hear people saying that uh, we are the best, that's why they're coming, that, that proves that we are the best, uh, you know. Well, you are good standing house in the neighborhood. You know, United States is the, you know, intact house in the neighborhood after fire. And you know the fire has run, has, has, has gone through the neighborhood because El Salvador is smoldering. Nicaragua is smoldering. <laughs> uh, you know, Honduras is smoldering. South America, you know, is smoldering. The United States has, has, through CIA and other covert operations, have, have, you know, installed dozens of, you know, questionable leaders, leaders, authoritarians who didn't understand the economy and didn't understand, I mean, they didn't care about their own nations. Dozens of them have been installed in by covertly in South America and Central America, or. Uh, in many of them, you know, many of the nationalist ones who really understood the economy and had their people behind them and were doing something good for their, their government, their country, their people, you know, building the neighbor, their, their own house, uh, it wasn't beneficial. It wasn't beneficial to many U.S. corporations if those countries acted in a nationalist way. Because you know, if you're if they acted in a nationalist way, these guys were losing profits, because they were trying to keep some of the profits for themselves, for their own people, and that was you know that was example of it was clear in in case of these you know small Central American countries that, for example, you know were growing bananas and and you know exporting to the United States, and you know the United Fruit Company had you know had a very good business producing bananas in those shed holes and exporting into the United States for a great profit and but those those small states started you know having some nationalist governments came into power and that was not beneficial to the profits of United Food uh, Fruit Food Company Fruit Company so basically they went and convinced the the whole apparatus of U.S. government that these motherfuckers are communists. Well, they were nationalists. Nationalists usually turn socialists because true nationalists care about every member of their society. That is, true nationalists become half-assed socialists. And yeah, they cared about their people and, you know, the apparatus of, U of the United States government went against them because you know, it's like no no we can't have other people caring about their people we 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 have our corporations need to make profits so they went over and over and over and over again overthrew any kind of nationalist government that was trying to take care of its people overthrew them and you know installed some some banana republic that's where the phrase com comes from banana republic so, and so na remove the intelligent nationalist leader who cares about his people and install some fucking puppet who doesn't know his ass from the hole in the ground. Uh, of course, the whole system is not going to be very, you know, good. It's, it's, it's like installing an incompetent mayor for the city. Things are not going to turn well for the inhabitants of the city so these shed holes it's like you know it's, it's like 
their their homes, their their countries were burned down intentionally. You know, made you know, uh, incompetent leader was chosen for them covertly by the CIA, and those incompetent leaders fucked the country, and now it's a smoldering piece of land, and overpopulated, under-resourced because it was mismanaged by incompetent puppets of the CIA and for many decades and for many decades they keep sending their people keep, you know getting up and walking to the border to because the uh, United States is the one country that is blessed and not burned down by incompetence so the whole idea is yes love United States. I love Uncle Sam. We all do love Uncle Sam. But these people who keep coming to United States is because their house is being burned down intentionally, unintentionally, Afghanistan. For years, CIA was, you know, sending arms to some cocksuckers, fundamentalists who were, you know, trying to prevent any kind of order from getting established in Afghanistan. Why? Because, you know, orders, any kind of order that the Russians bring is unacceptable. Because it might be communist, it might be socialist. It might, who cares what kind of order? As long as it's order, it's better than disorder. In disorder, terrorism, is produced in order you know education is produced disorder you have terrorists and order you have educated people i don't care what kind of order communist order socialist order who the fuck care what kind of order especially when it's on the other side of the planet i mean in 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 honduras as long as there is order you will have universities if there, you, there is no order you have bloodshed and terrorists what what part of this is hard to understand disorder means when you create disorder in your neighborhood or on the other side of the planet because you 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 want to get a, get your way then that creates that that, that that's a fire it's sort of like north korea Here's the thing. See the difference between Korea and Vietnam. Vietnam, again, the, the capitalists went in and said, no, no, no communism, fuck you. First of all, I mean, you do what you want to do on your land, they do what they want to do on their land. How is it that it's your business that how they want to live? They are Asians. How much do you know of their culture? Maybe communism or socialism is, you know, more palatable in their culture. You see, not not everybody on this planet was, you know, was a risk taker, individualist who went to the West and conquered the land and tamed the land and eliminated the redskin. This streak of individualism is not present in the rest of the planet. Many parts of this planet, the in people are more communal kind of people. The United States and a few of these territories that were established by um, forced immigration of the pink skins from Europe, these tend to be more individualistic because the people who populated these areas, North America, Australia, the people South America, the people who populated these areas are the you know thrill seeking, risk taking individualists who cut from their communities in Europe and went to the West. And so they by nature they're individualistic. But many nations in the world are, you know, traditionally they are communal. They're not individualistic, they're communal including Vietnam and Korea. So this whole idea of they, they shouldn't be communal, they shouldn't think community, they should think individual and capitalism and you know democracy and uh, 
You you tried it with 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 no. What happened? It's sort of like the capitalist, the pink skin capitalist coming in, trying to establish their form of economy and governance in yellow skin land, in the land that they have they have very little knowledge of its core culture. It's traditional thousands, hundreds of thousands of year old culture. So they go in and they try it and they try it. So many millions of people killed, so many hundreds, thousands of Americans killed. And then, you know, setting fire, you're setting fire to their neighborhood. And eventually these guys pull out and those guys get on top. For a while they try communism, then they try something else and they're little this, a little communism, a little capitalism. They're, they're hanging on, they're doing their thing. Nothing really bad happened. Yes, some, some totalitarian and some, some communism and some, they have tried it, a little more capitalism now and they're, they're getting along. They, they're after their house was burned down, after Americans left, yeah. After the initial burn down, they have been doing okay. That burn down didn't have to happen. And of course, before Uncle Sam stepped in, the British were burning down Vietnam because apparently that was their land. It's called, it used to call the French Indochina that Vietnam and a couple of other countries around it. It, it. This whole idea that, you know, we are the good guys and we are bringing you freedom and we are bringing you the best, it's bullshit. This is a military industrial complex way of convincing the public to help them in, you know, conquering more land for profit. End of story. I mean, I don't know what to say. So this whole idea that, uh, but but you see, Korea, sort of like okay, no, the fighting is not over. They keep for years now. Both sides are building arms because one side has been, you know, you no, know, we we need this side to this side is free and that side is not. Really, is, is South Korea free? Have you noticed their music? Have you noticed they so much like community and uniformity that they have musical bands that are made up of 20, 30, 40, 50 people? These, you know, K-pop bands. It's like you're looking at, you know, a, 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 a platoon of, you know, dancers when you look at them. It's like a military platoon, everybody in step, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You really think these motherfuckers are individualistic in South Korea? No, it's, it's the same culture, but in, in, in a forced capitalist system that has become a, you know, a, a, an interesting amalgamation of what happens if you force individualism on a bunch of on a society which believes in community more, more, more in communes. So you have these, you know, chabols, big corporations in which, you know, the, the family the, who, which owns the corporation is worshipped as gods and everybody else is in a big commune in this corporation. And, and it's sort of, it, it, it becomes a very, big, a very interesting experiment. But that's it, just an experiment. And they're still at the state in, in the state of war because why? Let them unite, let them, they want to go communist, go communist. You want to go try a little capitalism, try a little capitalism. There is no good guy or bad guy here. But the idea is that military industrial complex profits from keeping tensions high around the world. The military industrial complex profits from keeping tensions high around the world and sometimes, you know, fire, again, more profitable for military industrial complex. 
So the whole neighborhood is burning down. You have these immigrants moving into Europe from the Middle East that, you know, what happened? The military from NATO went into the Middle East supposedly to create a better world. Now the Middle Easterns are in Europe, from Syria, from Iraq, from Afghanistan. They're all moving to Europe. Because why? Because it's the house, the only standing house in, in, in the Paradise City. It's not like because they love Europe. It's because their own house was burned down by NATO soldiers. Supposedly because NATO soldiers were, try, were supposed to create a better house for them over there. So they burned their old house down. But eh, then they said, we are not, uh, that's, that's the line that NATO and specifically the, the military, Uncle Sam's military uses that says, we are not nation builders. And they're right. So if you're not nation builders, why do you de destroy the old one? I mean, it's sort of like saying, going in with the promise of, I'm going to demolish your house so you can have a better house. Then you demolish the guy's house, burn it to the ground. Once it's done, you look at the guy and said, I never told you I was a builder. We are not nation builders. So if, if you're not nation builders, which we know you are not, because nation building is just a ridiculous idea. Nation must be built with the, by the people who are there. Because I, from the outside, I don't know the local culture. How I'm going to build a nation for the locals when I don't fucking know their culture? How things work over there? How people interact with each other? Nobody from the outside can build a nation for other people. Nobody. You can put up refugee camps, but you can't build a nation for other people. This is something a five-year-old can figure out. But then they said, no, we have to go over there and give them a better system. They went over there, they demolished their current system, and then they said, but we are not nation builders. Now you build it again. No, they're not going to build. It's it's because, you know, how many people are building in Paradise City? It's sort of like it's such an immense challenge after your nation has been smoldered to the ground. It's smoldering, burned to the ground, it's smoldering. A lot of people, not all, but a lot of people just pick up and leave and say, okay. It seems this area, this area of geography that we are living, it's not so safe. Anybody can come in and bomb us. And even if we rebuild, there is no guarantee that the next mayor of the planet doesn't won't come and you know bomb us again. So you know what? The safest thing is to go to the mayor's house. Nobody will bomb us if we are living in the mayor's house. Yeah, the people of paradise city would say, oh, we're going to go to the mayor's house and live over there because uh, apparently he has thought of some ways into to for preventing his own house from burning down. So we go just go over there and live. So that's the point. You cannot say, God bless us. God bless America. We really don't care about others because it's one planet. And nobody has yet has figured out how to, you know, leave this planet and go somewhere else, live in another planet. It's the same planet. And people, if you burn their house down and if you go in supposedly with good intentions, but eventually, but the reality is when you fuck with their system and their system gets burned down, they're going to seek, many of them are going to seek refuge in your house. Many of them are going to seek refuge in your house. The answer to 9-11 was not that, okay, some people from Saudi Arabia attacked us. Okay, let's go occupy Afghanistan and Iraq. 
And if they don't like it, we are going to bomb them into submission. Okay. The answer was not that. The answer was, oh, they attacked us. We're going to secure our, you know, our airports a little more. Make sure these cocks like in Saudi Arabia's, Arabians don't come in like this again and do us bad again. The answer is, let's make sure we we have put more controls on who the fuck, uh, which one of these motherfuckers we let in. Why that wasn't the objective? Why the scrutiny was not over what can we do at home to prevent these cocksuckers from committing such a horrible act? N not what we can ab do abroad. Do what we can do abroad. You can do. You know, it's Uncle Sam has got. Has, Uncle Sam has got a big penis. He can swings a big dick and can get a lot of things done uh, on the other side of the planet but at what cost what cost to uncle sam uncle sam's taxpayer and what cost to the locals who after their house gets burned down or bombed or you know is smoldering half of the household is going to pick up and go to europe to for safety to build in a safer place that this this has been the tradition of humans on earth that if your how if the place you're living becomes unsafe, you pick up and you go to somewhere that is safe. CIA has made a lot of South America, Central America, through the past 50 years, 70 years. CIA has followed some short-sighted objectives in Middle East, in South America, in Central America, in Southeast Asia. And, you know, the, the politicians have followed some, you know, short-sighted objective, objectives. And here's another problem with this supposed the best system in the world, which is democracy. The guy is in the office for four years, eight years. He follows then objectives that are four years dependent. And apparently after he leaves office, he can no longer be held accountable. Never seen in the West, in these so-called democracies, never seen a politician who fucks up ever be held accountable after he leaves office. Because, you know, that would be, that would be a stain on our, uh, you know, on our great system, so we just ignore the politicians who fuck up. We just ignore their fuck up. Like Mr. George W. Bush. We just ignore the motherfucker, sort of like, it's like he didn't make up, make up stories, he didn't, you know, you know, get involved in the unproductive war uh, with so much suffering, he didn't cause that. He, he could have said, okay, folks, we are going to, you know, secure our borders a little more. We are going to scrutinize which fucking Saudi Arabians we let into our land so this wouldn't happen. He didn't say all of that. He said, we're going to go to fucking, you know, on the mountain tops of Afghanistan, hunt Afghans. It's like he's going to safari. Uh, so for that, no, no accountability. So such great system that when you know you're in power for four to eight years, then whatever you do, you're never going to be held accountable. So therefore, you order your intelligence services and your overt and covert military services to go and you know try to achieve very short short-sighted objectives in Afghanistan, in Chile, in. Nicaragua, in Iran, in Korea, in uh, Cambodia, very short sight objective, let's, let's do this to get that solution and get, let's do this to result that would result into that. But it's, it's the butterfly effect. You, you cannot do, you know, such a, you, you cannot change the equation, equation in that part of the world to such a great extent 
and expect, you know, you know, no repercussions. I mean, you, you change a little thing in a society and a lot of things are affected by that little change. I mean, can you imagine how much, how much is affected when one country goes to the other side of the planet and bombs another country into submission? Economies of many countries around that area is affected. The economy of the world is affected. The refugee system of the world is affected. The, the, the populations are affected. The demography, democ demography of the planet is affected. And this is the great democratic system. No accountability. Here is the keys for four years to eight years. Here's the keys. Go, you know, burn some rubber. And God bless, you know, here's the keys. God bless you and this car. But then whatever you do, whoever you hit on your driving, whatever neighborhood you, you burn down, fuck them. God bless America. Yeah, God bless America, but America, you do understand my pink skin friends that if, 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 if as a mayor of the planet, you don't care about, you, you don't, you know, you don't worry about other people being blessed, the least that can happen is that those other peoples are going to get on the road and try to get to your blessed house <laughs> because you're the only house that's standing that apparently your house is the blessed one and their house is the cursed one you know the people of Honduras is sort of like Nicaragua El Salvador they're like okay it seems our house is cursed and America is blessed so we're going to America so what's the problem you see what I'm saying? God bless America means Honduras, the people from Honduras are packing and saying, God, okay, yes, it seems it's true. God has blessed America, so we let's pack up and go to America. People of Syria are saying, yes, it's true. The pink skin land in Europe is blessed, so we should pack up and go to pink skin land in Europe. Because their house was burned down by NATO, a few days ago and the Hondurans were still suffering because of you know CIA intervention in the 1980s 70s 60s who cares yes I do love Uncle Sam and God bless America but how about God bless humanity how how about god bless earth how about god bless our planet how about just god bless just leave it empty god bless so everybody on this planet can you know fill whatever they want and the reality a few days ago this is going to take a little longer but a few, a few days ago, I heard Mr. Bill Maher stating in his uh, monologue that to, to, the, to the progressive wing of the house, the few ladies who are from brown and black countries and have, thank God, that they have found a voice, told them that, yeah, you should think about, you know, the 70% 70, 70 pink skins who are living on, in, in, in America and you shouldn't really, you know, care about the, the, the teenager in, in Honduras, Nicaragua, or the teenager in Gaza, you know, that's, you know, under pressure from other pink skins in Israel. And you shouldn't care about them. You should care about what these electorate, these people who are, who are, you know, the electorate in Uncle Sam's land, you should listen to them and not care about, you know, 
the, the, the teenagers in El Salvador or the teenagers in Gaza. He did say this, and it's like, yes and no, uh, Mr. Bill Maher, yes and no, because yes, the, the, the voter is the pink skin American, but what the system does, what this mayor of the planet, the Uncle Sam's managers who are managing planet Earth as the sole superpower so far, what they do and the positions they take does to, does really affect Honduras and Gaza. So, not caring for what they, what is good for them means these refugee caravans. Not giving a fuck about those means refugee car caravans to Europe. Not caring for the Gazans and the Syrians and the Iraqis means refugee camps, to, uh, refugee caravans to Europe. And not caring for, you know, what the Nicaraguans and El Salvador and Hondurans and Mexicans and Venezuelans and Chileans, what happens to these motherfuckers means caravans of refugees to United States. So, you you cannot say that this is this is this is the very was very important for me because uh, for for many years I, I still believe that if 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 you're the mayor of the town as uncle sam is the mayor of planet earth other people who you know since Uncle, whatever Uncle Sam does affects so many people, not doesn't just affect Americans. What Uncle Sam does, being the superpower on planet Earth, affects so many people on planet Earth that it's only logical that those other people living in other parts of planet Earth have a say in what Uncle Sam does. You know, taxation without representation, it's sort of like really comes in a it's it really shows itself when you see that you know people of Honduras are so affected by Uncle Sam's policies but they don't have a vote in Uncle Sam's system people of Nicaragua are so affected by Uncle Sam's policies but they don't get a vote people of Vietnam are, were so affected by Uncle Sam's policies, but they didn't have a vote in Uncle Sam's system. You, you see where I'm going with this? So, people of Somalia are affected so much by Uncle Sam's policy, so thank God for Ilhan Omar, because, you know, she's a voice for fucking those cocksuckers over there, because before her, you know, she is an American, she is speaking in America, but, you know, she, she, you can consider her as a voice from far-flung corner of the empire. Because it's an empire. You can't have an empire, Mr. Bill Maher. You cannot have an empire but not have representation from all corners of the empire. You cannot have an empire but not have representation from the four corners of the empire. Either not have an empire, or if you do have an empire, yes, you should have some representative from, you know, that province of Somalia in the house of representatives. Because if you've got an empire, you don't have a country, you have an empire. For this empire to, you know, not, you know, not set fire here and there, at will and cause a lot of refugees and immigrants and a lot of hardship, you must have representative. So, you know, deals can be worked out instead of wars. Imagine that if, let's say, Saddam, as the leader of his people, he was a cocksucker, but let's say he was the leader of his people. Imagine if Saddam, if Iraq had two, three representatives, instead of having that, those representatives in, in United Nations, 
if they had a representative, couple of representative in the House of Representatives in the United States, but as as a piece of the empire, as a you know territory within the empire, then maybe something could have worked out, been worked out with Uncle Sam instead of going to war with those motherfuckers. So much bloodshed. I mean, they, they built United Nations for this specific purpose that everybody sends their representatives so things can be worked out without going to war. But apparently that's not enough. It, it, it's like the, 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 the Senate and the House of Representatives in the United States and in general in NATO countries totally ignore United Nations. It's sort of like, no. We do what we must do so God can bless us. Fuck the rest. Well, fuck the rest. Okay, you see the, the refugees, the caravans that are coming? That's because for so long, the pink skin of North America and Europe said, fuck the rest. If they have to burn, they have to burn. God bless us. Okay, now you got a refugee problem because everybody is coming to the safe house in the neighborhood. The only standing house in the neighborhood. God bless America. Better th than that, God bless. If you really need to mention God, at least say God bless. So everybody get this, gets this sense that for everybody to be happy where they are, God has to bless bless them they all have to have peace and stability and security where the fuck they are so they don't move so you won't have an immigration crisis so let's prepare the public by just saying god bless so public starts understanding that blessing one piece of territory or another piece of territory is not going to solve the problem all territories needs to be safe and secure so there wouldn't be a problem there would be less problems 